He stole $122 million by asking for it. This would make for the most boring heist movie. In late August, YouTuber Doug Sharp posted one of his famous fun fact short videos. Fun fact! About a Lithuanian man who scammed over $100 million from Facebook and Google. Doug summarizes the story quite nicely in under a minute. But now that he's brought the story to my attention, I thought I would take the opportunity to make a longer video giving more details about this crazy crime. Hopefully not too much detail, but let's see how it goes. Let's get started. First of all, I'll just state that the source information for this video comes directly from the official government websites. These are press releases from the United States Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice, as well as Lithuania's own justice site, Lietuvos Teisme. If you're interested in reading the details directly, I'll place links in the video description. So, as was noted in the title of this video, a Lithuanian man scammed Facebook and Google for about $120 million. The man's name is Evaldis Rybashovskas of Vilnius, Lithuania. If he was dated to be 50 years old in 2019, then he would have been around 43 or 44 when he began to commit the crimes, which started in 2013 and went through 2015. So here's how he did it. Rymashovskas registered and incorporated a company in Latvia that had the same name as a Taiwan-based computer hardware manufacturer by the name of Quanta Computer. Side note here, I love how the US government press release says it's an Asian-based company, which is a sneaky way of avoiding the politics of calling it Taiwan and angering China. But anyways, Rymashovskas opened, maintained, and controlled various accounts at banks located in Latvia and Cyprus under the name of Quanta Computer. He then sent a series of fraudulent phishing emails with fake invoices to employees of Facebook and Google, companies that regularly conducted multi-million dollar transactions with Quanta. Of course, the emails came from accounts that were designed to create the false appearance that they were sent by real Quanta employees. The fake invoices sent by Rymashovskas obviously had his Latvian and Cypriot bank account information, and so Facebook and Google would pay out those invoices, sending millions of dollars on a regular basis over the span of two years. After Facebook and Google wired funds to the fake Quanta bank accounts in Latvia and Cyprus, Rymashovskas quickly wired the money into different bank accounts in various locations throughout the world, including Latvia, Cyprus, Slovakia, Lithuania, Hungary, and Hong Kong. Now, money transfers of this magnitude are bound to draw attention from any credible and responsible bank. So how did Rymashovskas deal with this extra scrutiny? Well, he forged invoices, contracts, and letters that falsely appeared to have been executed and signed by executives and agents of Facebook and Google. These documents also had false corporate stamps embossed with the company names. All of this was submitted to banks to support the large volume of funds that were fraudulently wired. So, with this simple yet clever strategy, Rymashovskas tricked Facebook and Google into giving him $122,139,995 US dollars and 97 cents. More specifically, he got Google to send $23,260,450.17 and he got $98,879,545.80 from Facebook. Now, I don't know how the arrest went down, but Doug Sharp says that the FBI were the ones that first caught on to the scheme. The official statement says that Rymashovskas was ultimately arrested by Lithuanian authorities in March 2017, in Lithuania. The Department of Justice, in its press release, also thanked the following organizations for their cooperation. The FBI, the Prosecutor General's Office of the Republic of Lithuania, the Lithuanian Criminal Police Bureau, the Vilnius District Prosecutor's Office, and the Economic Crime Investigation Board of Vilnius County Police Headquarters. The list also includes the Prosecutor General's Office of the Republic of Latvia and the International Assistance Group at the Department of Justice in Canada. Vilnius District Court ruled that Rymashovskas should be extradited to the United States to face criminal prosecution there. In case it isn't obvious, criminal law and criminology aren't exactly specialties of mine. But for some reason, Rymashovskas and his lawyer decided to fight the extradition and thus submitted an appeal to Lithuanian courts. Does anyone know why he would do this? Would a Lithuanian court be more lenient on sentencing? Or are Lithuanian jails nicer than American jails? Let me know what you think by leaving a comment. 
Anyways, I imagine the crime would have been a tricky one in terms of jurisdiction. On one hand, Rimashauskas is a Lithuanian citizen, and might have been in Lithuania much of the time he was sending out those fake invoices. On the other hand, the victims, Facebook and Google, are American companies. Ultimately, Lithuania had, and continues to have, a bilateral cooperation agreement on extradition with the United States of America. The Lithuanian press release notes that Lithuania, quote, waived the right to conduct criminal proceedings based on the territorial principle and agreed that a person who may have committed a criminal act in his country of citizenship may be extradited to the requesting state. So, the Court of Appeal of Lithuania examined the complaint, but a decision was made to dismiss the appeal and ship Rimashauskas off to the United States. There, he would be prosecuted by the United States Attorney's Office and its Complex Frauds and Cybercrime Unit, and he would face trial by the Southern District of New York. In March 2019, two years after he was arrested, Rimashauskas pled guilty to one count of wire fraud and theft of over $120 million. He was then sentenced to 60 months or 5 years in prison, plus another 2 years of supervised release. I guess this means he'll be released around next year, in 2024. Rimashauskas was also ordered to forfeit $49,738,559.41 and to pay restitution in the amount of $26,479,079.24. I'll save you from doing the math. This amounts to $76.2 million, which is interesting, considering that he stole over $122 million. Maybe the missing amount is how much he had already spent over the years and could not be recovered. I don't actually know. But that's the story of the Lithuanian man who conned two big tech companies out of more than $120 million. I'm sure many of you are thinking the same thing as me. Facebook and Google weren't double checking their invoices. That's how much money these guys have. They can literally afford to make mistakes. He probably could have gotten away with it if he had stopped earlier. Not that I would ever dream of committing such crimes, but I'm pretty sure that I could live a comfortable life with like one, two, or three million dollars. And what about you? If you were to imagine yourself as Evaldis Rimashauskas in 2013 and 2014, what would you have done? Would you be greedy and keep going, or would you stop after a certain amount? Let me know what you think by leaving a comment. And so, the Lithuanian word of the day is nusikaltelis, which means criminal. Nusikaltelis. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.